before the Tigers face the rival Seminoles. What they've accomplished, it is nothing short of remarkable. The party starts at 8 a.m. Eastern. We'll have plenty of special guests and giveaways. So don't miss any of the fun in Death Valley, 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN, plus a special half-hour show at noon on the ACC Network. See you there. The 76ers might just be the top team in the East. Joel Embiid is down 20 pounds. Ben Simmons and Tobias Harris, they secured that bag, secured those contracts, and their place in the process. And the Sixers made an off-season move to add dependable vet Al Horford to the arsenal. However, Philly also endured big losses. Floor spacing shooter J.J. Redick and clutch performer Jimmy Butler are gone. And of significance, Butler and Joel Embiid developed a buddy-buddy relationship during the Sixers' playoff run. And in a sit-down with Rachel Nichols, Joel expressed how much Jimmy would be missed. We lost <clears throat> a big piece in Jimmy. He did a lot of great things for us. Me and Nim, we got to the point where we were really close. Uh, we still close. Uh, we talk uh, a lot. And uh, that's my guy. Uh, that's my brother forever. I uh, wish he was on the team because I feel like the relationship that I built with him uh, could, could have gone a long way. Now he puts me in a situation where, uh, you know, I'm going to love it. Other guys got to step up and I got to do more. Max, yeah. what do you make of Joel Embiid's comments? It's obviously a challenge to Ben Simmons to be the guy that he can rely on to be his crime partner, to be a guy who can take over at the end of games because Joel Embiid can't get his own shot the way a small man can. Look, we saw it with Antetokounmpo last year, right? Last postseason. He is more of a big than I realized, Antetokounmpo, because he also is sort of the de facto point guard at times, you know, from the top of the key when he gets going downhill because he has enough handles to do it, and he's an excellent passer. But what did they do with Antetokounmpo? They surrounded him with shooters, including, including Lopez, who's not only a five who can shoot, but he can defend the rim. So you have a rim defender who can play, who allows you to play five out, so the guy who can't shoot can penetrate. You either double him, and he will find the open man, or he's going to bang it on you. It was an unstoppable system for the Bucks, and it could work even better for the Sixers. It can possibly work better for them, because Simmons got better handles than the Freak. Simmons is, Simmons is like a... a Toned down LeBron James with better handles, right? Like he is, he's got, and can get to the rim and goes hard. So what do you need? They brought in Al Horford. This man can shoot the three and defend the rim. He's a souped up Lopez. So you can start playing that way with Simmons. But what did I say last year, Stephen A? Simmons and Embiid are not complimentary. They're not, it's you eat, like Simmons needs his own team the way the freak needs his own team in order to really optimize his value. But that's just not the case. So now you have Horford when Embiid's not on the floor, they can play the way Milwaukee does if they want. Because Richardson, by the way, is an underrated shooter. He's a career 37% shooter from three and he shoots four or five threes a game. So they can play a version of the Bucks without Embiid. But when Embiid is in the game, it's not going to be the same kind of offense. A lot is going to be run through Embiid. And what Embiid is saying is, brother, when I'm in the game, can I rely on you to put us over the top? Can we saw what Jimmy Butler did in the playoffs last year, Stephen A. You brought it up. They had a guy to go take Kawhi on one end and then answer him on the other end. Hey, Ben Simmons, can you be that guy when we need you most? Or are you going to be in the dunker spot because you won't, not even can't shoot, you won't shoot. You won't take that responsibility. When he's talking about Jimmy Butler and their bond and everything, it's not just a personal bond. It's what Jimmy Butler did for the team in crunch time. Who's going to do that on this team? Because that's not Richardson. It's not Horford. They're nice players. It's got to be Simmons. You're wrong. You're wrong and you missed the boat on this one because it's not about on the court. It's about off the court. The fact of the matter is you bring up all of those things on the court. You can work around that. If you're a coach, if Brett Brown knows what he's doing, you can work around that. Yes, you don't want to lose Jimmy Butler, who's got the heart of a lion and he can ball and he averaged 18 and 8 in the 55 games that he 18, 5 and 4 actually in the, in the 55 games that he played for you. Plus, obviously, they were going to get him the ball in the fourth quarter, which is something he and Brett Brown agreed to. Initially, when he first got there, it wasn't like that. But as the season progressed, Brett 
Brown had promised them, it was going to be about him in that fourth quarter. So you're not wrong there. But the reason why I say that you're wrong overall about your take is because we're talking about Joel Embiid here. We're not talking about the Sixers as a basketball team. We're talking about a personality in Joel Embiid that played around too much. If you don't know Jimmy Butler that well, well, guess what? I do, and I'm telling you right now, he's a rough rider. This is a guy that called out the coach. This is a guy that calls out an organization. He ain't shy about saying a damn thing about what he feels and holding people accountable. As a matter of fact, one of the times he went off in Chicago after Tom Thibodeau was let go is because he wasn't being called out enough by the damn coach. He wanted I mean, to be called out. He wanted out to be him. called out. So that's the Jim that's the Jimmy Butler that we're talking about here. Now you juxtapose that personality to a Joel Embiid. Plays around, fun-loving, talks smack to cats, and then when he gets on the court, he gives it to them when healthy. There's no question about Joel Embiid's game. But in terms of what we both agreed to, seeing him crying when he walked off that court, how badly that loss hurt, and elevating the level of seriousness, I would contend to you that Jimmy Butler being gone puts more pressure on Joel Embiid to step up and produce on the court, which is something he doesn't mind. So now we get to the locker room. And inside that locker room, you've got a bunch of cats who are relatively demure to some degree, even though they're not fake, they're good dudes, all of that stuff. They ain't the rough rider that Jimmy Butler is. They ain't the dude that'll get in Joel Embiid's face and go like this. Look, man, you were soft as hell tonight. Hell you think you doing? Handle your business. Get focused. We need you. What the hell you doing? And call him like that. Tobias Harris is a good brother. He don't have that kind of personality. Ben Simmons don't have that kind of personality. Josh Richardson ain't in no position to have that kind of personality. Brett Brown, as much as he might try, there are still people who believe he's challenging. He's got something to prove as a head coach. You had all of the, you have all of these guys associated with the Sixers, and the one guy Al Horford is a different Adam. I don't know about the personality that he'll get in somebody's face, but I'd like to believe he's he'll respected. hold for. He's respected, highly respected. I'm just saying that personality that Jimmy Butler was off the court is what J was what you might Joel be right is in talking terms about. Of, pardon me, you might be right in terms of his intention. Maybe Joel Embiid in his mind is thinking like, "This is really what I mean. I need the locker room, whatever." But the effect is exactly still what I'm saying. If you look at that five, the starting five for the Sixers, they should be a great defensive team. Not a good defensive team, a, like an all-time great defensive starting five. Ben Simmons, Josh Richardson, Tobias Harris is the weak link, but at least he's a versatile defender, even if he's not good at defending any one position. Um, and not a good one. Uh, Al Horford and Joel Embiid. Ooh, ooh. And by the way, they can shoot it better than giving credit for. What Embiid is talking about is, all right, Josh Richardson's not the guy that's going to take you to the promised land. He's not going to take over the game. Tobias Harris, because, you know, great catch and shoot, but also not that kind of guy. Neither is Horford. You just said it. Mm -hmm. Embiid needs a crime partner. It looks like I, I brought this up last year. If you look at the trajectory of the Greek freak's career and compare it to Simmons, it's strikingly similar, not only as players, but in terms of their production. And then all of a sudden, the freak went. MVP and Simmons has flatlined because they didn't put the right kind of team around him. They've put a better, better kind of complementary parts around Simmons now, and the effect of what Embiid is saying is, okay, can you be that dude? We lost that dude. Can you be that dude now? No, I don't think that's what he's saying. And not, not only that, let's also understand from a basketball perspective what has transpired. Jimmy Butler is a damn good scorer and obviously a clutch play as well. Got a lot of heart. There's not a big discrepancy in terms of shooting prowess between him and Josh Richardson. We look at Tobias Harris. Some would say he and Jimmy Butler couldn't necessarily coexist. They expect Tobias Harris to be better with the absence of Jimmy Butler. You got Horford. He could spell for Joel Embiid when Joel Embiid has to sit out games, yep. when he's injured, or even when he's there, but he can't. He don't want him to play but so many minutes because you want him to be healthy for when it really, really counts. And can run the floor since, better since than they have, yeah. Since they haven't been in, out of the semifinals the last two years, not to mention one of the greatest strengths about Horford, as you well know, Ross, mm -hmm. Is his ability to spot up and shoot, he can stretch Particula it. particularly from the from the key. Horford now, could bring the ball up. Yeah, I understand Horford that. could do everything. I'm, I'm just saying they want, but you wouldn't ask him to with Ben Simmons. Sure, you don't need course. to. All I'm trying to say to you is that. So in terms of the shooting and finding somebody else, they're elite defensively, and in terms of shooting prowess, they didn't lose much. 
If, to me, the only loss is J.J. Not, J. Reddick wait, 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 being wait, wait. gone. But it's not shooting. It's like Richardson, Tobias Harris. Somebody uh, to go to is what you're talking about. Who's going to go get their and, own but, shot? But, Jimmy Butler could play the point. Jimmy Butler could get his own shot. Jimmy Butler could shoot from the outside, right. rose to the occasion, and defend you the might, other guy's might, best guy. You and might you look at it like that. that. Jared Dudley moment in the Nets uh, 76ers series. Remember when he got all up in his face? There was one guy who immediately came to Joel Embiid's defense. Of course. It was... Jimmy Butler. Of yes. That's so, I mean, I think that was that too. And then throughout the playoffs, the two of them would do post-game pressers yes, together. together. And in sitting with Jimmy Butler and with Joel Embiid, they'd both echo. They were tight. That's my guy. And they both were used to taking a lot of flack from the media. And I think they bonded around that. Jimmy would tell Joel, don't worry about what they're saying. And Joel would listen. And then Jimmy was closing and being clutch. Now, to, to your point, as we wrap this up, like, do you think it was in poor taste, though, as we head into a new season for Joel Embiid to have this national interview and instead of him to use the moment to say, hey, it's going to be more on me and Ben, he instead talked about how great Jimmy Butler was. To me, that's, that's the past. Well, he was asked a direct question about Butler, so he answered it. But to me, I'm with you on everything you said, which is really reflecting what Stephen A is talking about. They were besties. They were, you know, he helped them in the locker room, all this kind of stuff. But he didn't stop there. He talked about in crunch time in the play, he talked about the things that Butler was doing on the floor when it mattered most. And to me, that's a kind of tough love, big brother thing that Embiid's turning to Simmons and going, you're going to be that? Yes or no? And Not, yeah, Simmons but, can be that. Let me see you do it. But is he turning to Simmons or is he turning to Brett Brown? Mm. Because those of us who cover the NBA always hear about Brett Brown. And I keep, I, how many times I've been on this show, Max, and I brought up Brett Brown to you, who I genuinely like. He's a really, really nice man. He's a good man, okay? And he went through a lot to get to this point where the Sixers are competitive. So he deserves the opportunity to be there. I've never advocated for him being fired, even when I thought he threw, he blew three playoff games a couple of years ago, okay? But the bottom line is, everywhere you turn in the NBA for aspiring coaches out there, they all look at the Philly job because they all question whether or not he's the right man for the job. You think they did that without talking to players? Let me tell you something. You got players questioning and Brett B Brown. Did, and B's talking about what Butler did right. on the floor in crunch time. That's not Brett Brown. There's only one man he could be talking about. Right. That's Simmons. All right, guys, enough talking about the East. Because first tank is heading west. <laughs> we'll be in Los Angeles the entire week of October 21st for NBA opening week, including the huge Lakers and Clippers showdown at Staples. We'll have plenty of special guests and surprises.